Good evening. Good evening. I had to pause for a moment because I'm used to saying good morning, good morning right? <laughs> good evening and Merry Christmas to you all. Welcome to worship here at Timothy. My name is Pastor Bill Clark. If I haven't met you before, thank you for joining us this evening for worship as we get to celebrate the greatest gift that God has ever given us in the birth of his son, Jesus. And so tonight you'll see in the service, the first part is kind of, um, it's a normal service for us. But the second part, we'll read through Luke 2 and we'll sing some of our favorite hymns. So let's begin our worship service this evening and begin our worship with our first hymn. invite you to stand as you're able. We begin our worship this Christmas Eve in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Put not your trust in princes, in the Son of Man, in whom there is no salvation. When his breath departs, he returns to the earth. On that very day, his plans perish. Blessed is he whose help is the God of Jacob whose hope is in the Lord his God. Continue with the time of confession. As we gather together this Christmas Eve, let us confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, 
born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. Because of the Savior, who is the Word made flesh, and who dwelt among us, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead, by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I have three readings for this Christmas Eve. Excuse me, I have a prayer first. Let us pray. Father in heaven, you sent forth your son to be born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem us who are under the law. Grant that, though, grant that through faith we might rejoice in our adoption as your children. We ask this through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. Now for our readings this evening for Christmas Eve. Our Old Testament reading is from Daniel, the seventh chapter. I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the cloud of heavens, there, there, came, like one, there came, like, came one like a son of man, and he came to the Ancient of Days and was presented before him. And to him was given dominion and glory and a kingdom, and all peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is, ever, is an everlasting dominion, which shall not pass away, and his kingdom, one that should not be destroyed. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Galatians, the fourth chapter. I mean that the heir, as long as he is a child, is no different from a slave, though he is the owner of everything. But he is under guardians and managers until the date set by, the, by his father. In the same way also, when we were children, we were enslaved to the elementary principles of the world. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoptions as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into your hearts crying, Abba, Father, so you are no longer a slave, but a son, and if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I ask you please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light, the true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him. Yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, Glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. John bore witness about him and cried out, This was he of whom I said, He who comes after me ranks before me, because he was before me. And from his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. For the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. No one has ever seen God, the only God, who is at the Father's side. He has made him known. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, o Christ. You may be seated.
Let us pray. Lord, I ask that you speak through me this evening. Lord, may the words that come from my mouth give honor to you and your holy word and the perfect love that you showed for each of us that very first Christmas. Please guide me with your words to send and equip this flock to grow your family and show your love. I ask all of us in the name of our crucified Savior who was born this night and lived and died and rose for our sins. Amen. Hello, friends. Hello. Merry Christmas again to each one of you. I'm living through a pastor's uh, worst nightmare. I always think one of the worst two nights to, tr to get close to losing your voice would be Christmas or Easter. I mean, Christmas is one. So here we go. Second service, <clears throat> trying everything to make sure the voice keeps working tonight. First words that we read tonight in our gospel. In the beginning. You know, ever think about how John started his gospel? He sat down and wrote the words, in the beginning. You think, why would John pick those words? Why would he pick those words to start his gospel? Because John firmly wanted to establish who Jesus was. Do you notice it didn't start once upon a time? Because this is not a fairy tale. Tonight we celebrate our Savior's birth. When God left heaven and became a baby and lived among us, this was the beginning of Jesus' earthly life. But John is telling us that Jesus' life began long before his earthly life. The Gospel of John is a much different account than the other three Gospels. Matthew, Mark, and Luke. See, Matthew, Mark, and Luke wrote their Gospels about the same time, about the same age. The apostles knew. See, the apostles knew after Jesus had ascended to heaven. They were being persecuted. They knew the end was coming. All 12 of the apostles died within a few years of each other after Jesus ascended into heaven, except for John. John lived to be into his mid to late 80s. He's the only apostle that didn't die as a martyr. He wasn't murdered. John died from natural causes. John was not martyred. He wasn't for his preaching and teaching of Jesus Christ. The man, John, who had become very close friends with. The scriptures tell us that Peter, James, and John were in Jesus' closest circle. They were three of his closest friends within the twelve. Scripture also tells us that John was the disciple whom Jesus loved. When you think about it, yes, Jesus loved all the disciples equally. But the point they're trying to make is that they singled out John. This was the one that Jesus was the closest, closest to. John and Jesus had a very special relationship. And the words of John left us with, they give us this, it gives us this insight that no one except John had. So John's now into his mid to late 80s. He's on the island of Patmos in the Mediterranean Sea. And he has a revelation from God. And from that revelation, we now have the book, Revelation, the last book of the Bible. So John writes those words down in Revelation. Then John goes on to write his three letters to the church, his epistles. And then John, knowing the end of his life is near, writes his gospel of Jesus Christ. The year is 90 A.D. Jesus left in 33. We're 60 years later after Jesus had left this earth. John sits down to write his gospel, and he writes, in the beginning. Placing Jesus with his Father in heaven and letting everyone know that Jesus is God. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Or, 
you want to translate it like it did. In the beginning was Jesus, and the Jesus was with God, and the Jesus was God. This is no once upon a time. John wanted the people who read his gospel to know. To know that Jesus was, yes, a man, but he was also God with us, Emmanuel. But despite all these words from John, and the accounts from Matthew, Mark, and Luke, some people still believe that Jesus really wasn't God in the flesh. They'll say, ah, he's a good guy. He could even heal people. He's a good teacher. But he wasn't God in the flesh. Why would God do that? Why would God become a baby and then grow up to be a man? No other gods would do that. Nor have they done that. I just read a great book about Christmas. It's called Hidden Christmas by Pastor Tim Keller. And he wrote this about God being born as a baby in a manger. He wrote, We have something that no other religion even claims to have. It's a God who truly understands you from the inside of your experiences. There is no other religion that says God has suffered, that God has to be courageous, that he knows what it's like to be abandoned by his friends, to be crushed by injustice, to be tortured and die. Christmas shows he knows what you're going through. When you talk to God, he understands. You know what I love about God the most? Well, that he loves me. Second, my God doesn't just talk the talk. My God walks the walk. He came down and walked in our shoes. Our God knows our emotions, bad and good, because He was Jesus. And because God walked in our shoes, God knows how to love each and every one of you, just how you need to be loved. There is no other God like our God. We as Christians, at Christmas, we focus on the light of the Bethlehem star that directed the shepherds on Christmas. But the light of men, the light of Jesus Christ, shines every day. You see, John uses light so many times through his Gospel as an image of how we're to understand our God. The greatest example I can think of of light that God has given to us, the sun. Think about how different your life would be without the sun. The sun created by God. Google defined the sun as this. The sun is the star at the center of our solar system. It is a nearly perfect ball of hot plasma heated to incandescence by nuclear fusion reactions in its core. The sun radiates this energy mainly as light, ultraviolet and infrared radiation. And it is the most important source of energy of life on earth. So I wanted to look up some facts about the sun. The sun is about 433,000 miles away. The sun's about twice that big as it is far away. It's 865,000 miles across. In comparison to the earth, it's 109 times the diameter of earth. You may want to know how many suns it takes to, or how many earths it takes to fit in the sun to fill it up. About 1,300,000 earths would fit inside the sun. Our sun, created by God in Genesis, when he said, in the beginning, right? God spoke it into existence. And that sun gives us life. And our Son shows us truth. And our Son that God gave us is beautiful. So last Thursday when it was a record low, what, negative 14, 13, 15, something like that? That'd be a warm day without the sun. 
You think about this, God set the sun just far enough away from earth that we don't freeze to death, but not too close that we would burn up. Now, I wasn't too good in science in school, but as far as I know, earth's the only planet that you don't have to put anything on to be able to walk on it, right? You don't need an oxygen mask, you don't need a space suit. You can throw on your favorite pair of shoes, go outside, not have to think another thing about it. And the sun shows us truth. Light reveals the truth of things. If you can't see something clearly, what do you do? You turn the light up brighter, don't you? Or you move to a place where you can see more clearly that has better light. Because the brighter the light, the clearer we can see the truths of this world. And the light of the sun is beautiful. In my opinion, nothing more beautiful than watching a sunset. I love to watch a sunset. The colors change from one moment to the next as the sun goes farther and farther down in the horizon and then it disappears. Some of my favorite moments on vacations is watching the sun while sitting on the beach, setting behind the water. John wrote in our reading tonight, In him was life, and the life was the light of men. Here's what I picture with John. John's out on Patmos. It's the end of his life. It's an island. Sitting on the beach. Watching the sunset. And as he has this, watches the sunset, he has this connection between the life the sun gives us and the even greater life Jesus has given to us. John wants us to know that yes, the sun is important for us in our lives, but the life that Jesus won for us is the light that will stand for all time. Because we know as Christians that one day this earth will pass away. The sun, it'll go out. It will no longer provide light. That's the day that Jesus will return. And we will live by the light of our Savior. Remember that first book that John wrote, Revelation. At the end he wrote this, And night will be no more. They will, there will, they will need no light of lamp or sun. For the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The light of Christ will never end. The lights of Christmas, the star of Bethlehem, all point us to the light of Christ. A baby born this night, 2,000 years ago, in that dimly lit place. Was it a stable? Was it a cave? We don't know. But it was a dimly lit place to Mary and Joseph. The light of Christ shone that night in Bethlehem. And the, and, the, and the light continues to shine. That same light continues to shine today. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. The light of Christ shone in the darkness that first Christmas in Bethlehem. The light of Christ was shown at his transfiguration. The light of Christ was shown into the dark tomb on Easter morning. And the light of Christ was not extinguished on the cross on Good Friday. The light of Christ shines brightly at Christmas. We're all reminded of that. And the lights and the decorations and the manger scenes and the trees. But what about the days after Christmas? What about when the days after Christmas when it's over? What about those days in January where they seem, they seem to be darker and brighter? What about the days it's hard to see the light of Christ? The light of Christ is still there. The darkness will never overcome the light. You know, think about this. When Jesus was born, Satan knew he was born for one reason. And for 33 years, Satan tried to tempt Jesus. 
But Jesus fulfilled the reason He was born. And the light of, of the star of Bethlehem won over the darkness of sin, death, and the devil. As believers of Jesus Christ, we will always live in the light of the star of Bethlehem. The light of Christ always wins. And it's always with us. Because the light of Christ, it gives us life. It shows us truth. In the light of Christ, it is beautiful. John wrote this in chapter 8 of his Gospel. Then Jesus again spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not walk in the darkness, but will have the light of life. This world can be a pretty dark place, even on Christmas Eve. This life and the lights of Christmas are temporary. But the light of Christ is life. And in His light, you will never walk alone in darkness. His light gives us life. His light also gives us truth. John chapter 12, he wrote, I have come as light into the world, so that everyone who believes in me will not remain in darkness. There are many things in this world to believe in. Things that we seek light in and hope in. But in the end, they're all going to be dark one day. The lights of Christmas and the season, they're soon going to be over. Put them back in the box for next year. The truth of Christ is believing that the baby born this night over 2,000 years ago is the light of the world. It's believing that God came, into the, came to this earth in human form to know us even more. To understand us even more. It's believing that the baby born this night loves you more than you could ever understand or know. In the light of Christ, it's beautiful. And from the fullness, we have all received grace upon grace. There is nothing more beautiful than the grace we receive from the mere life of Jesus here on earth. God's grace is love we don't deserve. For all the sins we've committed, because of the light of Christ, we in return receive grace upon grace upon grace. For the times that we've questioned God, even been angry at God, because of the light of Christ, we in return receive grace upon grace upon grace. For the times I don't feel very loving towards others or even myself, because of the light of Christ, we in return receive grace upon grace upon grace. Perhaps tonight, perhaps sometime this Christmas season, we will get a glimpse once again of why He is beautiful. Because Jesus had this highness, had this infinite highness of being God, and yet He became one of us. He lived in our condition. He knows our darkness. That's beautiful. That's grace upon grace. Because when we find something to be beautiful, like a sunset over the ocean on vacation, we'll dwell on it. We'll stand before it. Just because of its sheer beauty. A few moments at the end of the night, we're going to sing Silent Night by Candlelight. One of my favorite images of Christmas is to see your faces illuminated by candles as we sing Silent Night, Holy Night. All is calm. All is bright. 
Son of God loves pure light. Radiant beams from Thy holy face with the dawn of redeeming grace. You see, the light of Christ shone brightly that first Christmas. And it still does today. And it will tomorrow. That first Christmas was the beginning of God's redeeming grace for each and every one of us. And each Christmas is a reminder of that beautiful love shown to each and every one of us. Because the light has won over the darkness. The light of Christ. That is grace upon grace. That is beautiful. Amen? Amen. Let us pray. And may the peace of God which surpasses all understanding be with us all. Amen. This time the ushers will come forward and collect the tithes and the offerings. I invite you to please rise as you're able.
As Christians, we confess what we believe in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I ask you, Christian, what do you believe? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and peace to His people on earth. Glory be to You, O God, for your promised grace, forgiveness, and life given to us and to the whole world in your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. By the great glory of his sacrificial death on the cross, for the life of the world we have peace, the peace of sins forgiven, and of the sure and certain promise of eternal life, which begins now and is eternal in the promised resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Glory and praise to you, O God. Lord, in your mercy. Father, you have made us your own sons and daughters, your own children, by the water and spirit of holy baptism. Bind us in the faith and love that are in Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant your blessing and guidance to us, all that we guidance to us, all that we may reflect your love to one another and to the world. Lord, in your mercy, in the in a world still abound in darkness and sin. Let the light of your salvation and peace be proclaimed throughout the world that many may come to, to the acknowledge of and faith in your promise and gift of life. Lord, in your mercy, guide and direct your church throughout the world to teach the faithful, reach the lost, and care for all. Grant your defense and protection to all pastors and people who suffer persecution throughout the world. Bind us all as one family in the faith and confession of the gospel of Jesus Christ and the power of your word and sacraments. Lord, in your mercy, visit with your protection, love, and healing all those who are alone, those suffering from any illness, the despairing and the troubled. Embrace them in your mighty and comforting arms of mercy and increase their faith and confidence in you. Lord, in your mercy, with great reverence and love, we remember before you, all everlasting God, all our departed relatives and friends. Keep all who have died in the faith in Jesus in your peaceful presence, that with them we may praise you as one family forever when our Lord and Savior rises on the last day. Lord, in your mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. To you be all praise and worship, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, the one and only God, both now and forever. Amen. Taught by our Lord and Savior to pray, we pray these words. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We hear again the good news from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 2. Following each section of the reading, we will sing songs of Christmas joy, echoing the sounds of the angels on that first Christmas night. Angels are messengers of God who often announce special blessings to His people. Many of our best beloved songs of Christmas include references to angels. In those days, a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration when Quirinius was governor of Syria. And all went to be registered, each to his own town. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, from the town of Nazareth to Judea, to the city of David, which is called Bethlehem, because he was from the house and lineage of David, to be registered with Mary, 
his betrothed who was with child. And while they were there, the time came for her to give birth. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in swaddling cloths and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. And in the same region, there were shepherds out in the field, keeping watch over their flock by night. And an angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were filled with fear. And an angel said to them, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good news of great joy that will be for all the people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you you will find a baby wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace among those with whom He is pleased.
And the angels went away from them, and when the angels went away from them into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go over to Bethlehem and see this, see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. And they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger. And when they, the shepherds, saw it, they made known the saying that had been told them concerning this child. And all who heard it wondered at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured up all these things, pondering them in her heart. And the shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
Ask you to please rise as you're able. This Christmas we pray, come Lord Jesus, true Son of Adam, come Lord Jesus, true Son of Abraham, come Lord Jesus, true Son of David, come Lord Jesus, true Son of God, come Lord Jesus, true Son of Man, come Lord Jesus, that we might receive adoptions as sons, come Lord Jesus, amen. Receive the blessing of the Lord. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make His face shine on you and be gracious to you. He looks upon you with His favor and gives you His peace. Amen. You may be seated. There will be some instructions up on the screen about how to light the candle. I apparently didn't follow them very well first service because I had a little bit of wax on my hand. As the light of these candles illuminate our faces, it symbolizes the light of Christ. A child in the manger of Bethlehem, the Savior suffering our death on the cross and soon to come from His throne on high as a judge of all. He is our light here on earth and the eternal light who enlightens heaven where there is no need of candle or sun. Rejoice, for the light of the world has come the light who transforms us with the brightness of his glory.
Merry Christmas to each and every one of you. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.